All right, so just going back to show you how to get to the photo editor, um, Photopea, and it's available on Chromebooks, and it's very much like a Photoshop, but easier. So you're going to open from your computer the template that we're going to be using, which is going to be very similar to what your watercolor paper is going to look like in the way that we are dividing it. And this is um, called the Cinema Palette Template. So you're going to click on that, go ahead and open it. And so this is size to the correct size. And then we're going to import the image from your movie still that you um, chose, whatever scene that you chose is your favorite scene from your favorite movie, or it could be even a TV show. So I'm going to go to File, Open, In Place, and I'm going to go to my most recent. And here is my Dorothy um, JPEG from The Wizard of Oz. And so it's already um, in a mode where you can move it around. So I'm actually going to make it bigger to fit this top form. I want to make sure that I'm not stretching it out in a way that is um, taking away from its proportions. So I want it to look not stretched out or anything, but in correct proportions. Okay. And once you do that, you don't need to worry about um, how it looks like it's beyond. It'll fit just right into that space. So next we're going to be creating our, um, our template for all the different color swatches. So we're going to be I'm using a couple different tools. We're going to be using this um, rectangle select and we're going to be using an eyedropper and we're going to be using the gradient tool but when you click on the gradient tool we want to make sure that we are on the bucket. Which maybe I can't do yet until I select. So um, we are going to use the select square rectangle tool and we're going to select this first rectangle. I'm going to use the eyedropper and I'm going to choose some of the most dominant colors that I see in here. So I'm going to start with this color and you'll see it show up in this little box down here. And then I'm going to go to my gradient tool There we go. So you have to click the little triangle corner. I'm going to pick paint bucket tool. Oops, I'm getting a little message that I have to rasterize this first. So I am going to make sure I do that adjustment. I have to remember how to do that. Okay, that should work now. There we go. So if that shows up, you're just going to go to um, layer and then rasterize and that will make these available for you to add the color. Okay, so I'm going to go to my next square. I'm going to pick the rectangle select tool and select within that solid black rectangle and I'm going to choose my dropper and I'm going to choose another dominant color. So I see um, I had this sort of like deep red. I'm going to choose this orange color and now it's here all set up for me. All I got to do is pick my bucket and click on here and that fills in that color swatch. 
I'm going to repeat the process by clicking on the rectangle tool, selecting that rectangle. I'm going to go to my eyedropper. This time I'm going to pick yellow. And I see that it's there. I'm going to go ahead and click on my bucket and fill that color swatch. And I'm going to repeat the process with all the dominant colors that I see. Um, including skin tone, color of the dress, and any variations of colors that you see. So I'm going to pick her skin tone here. Go to my bucket. Okay. Until I have all 10 color swatches filled in. And eventually this will be then saved. And I'm going to print these in color for you so you, that you have um, basically your sketch that you're working out, out from. So I'm going to choose this green. Maybe it's going to be a lighter green. And so what you'll be doing in watercolor is that you'll be um, sketching your image on your watercolor paper and we're going to be matching up the colors by creating these color swatches and watercolor on your paper and then filling in your sketch with those appropriate colors. So I always choose my rectangle tool first. I'm going to go to my eyedropper next. Click on the color. I'm going to go to my bucket, fill in the swatch. I'm going to repeat that process so I get variations from light to dark of each of the major colors that you see in the, the scene. Oops. It's okay if the square is not completely filled as long as you have it predominantly filled with the color that you're choosing. So I'm going to go for this darker blue here so I have some variations in values. And I'm going to go ahead and maybe take a look at the color of her hair. So I have some nice variations here of oranges and dark brown and orange. And I think I'm going to do another variation of her skin tone so I can use that as highlights and shading. Go to a shadowed area. And that was the lightest skin tone. Here's a darker skin tone. And I think for the last one, I might do a variation of the green. So I have some different greens in the background, not just one. So you might even have them either next to each other, or the variations, or you might have them just on top of each other. I had another square, I might do the yellow, but I can vary the yellow as I'm working on my piece. So I'm going to look for a brighter green. And you can see as the color is changing here, so you can, there we go. All right, so from here, I'm going to go ahead and save my work. So I'm going to go to File. I'm going to Export as a JPEG really important. And so I'm going to switch my pixels to inches and we want the height to be seven inches. And it will automatically switch the width to about five and a quarter, which is what you want. And then I'm going to go ahead and save. And so when you save it on your drive, I would make sure to maybe have your name on it and what scene it is. And I'm just going to name it um, Wizard of Oz Color Palette. So whatever movie scene you have, Color Palette should be fine. 
and then that will download and you can send it to me so I can print it off. And so that is what it's going to look like. And that's going to form our basis for our sketch and then for our watercolor. All right.